Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a medical gas alarm panel in Revit. Last time we saw how to create a medical gas zone valve box. We used this example from Amico, three medical gases. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an alarm panel that will be monitoring that zone valve box. This uh, alarm panel can be used from one medical gas all the way up to eight medical gases. We're going to go into the spec sheet. We're going to grab the dimensions from there. We're going to plan our family. And then I'm going to show you how to create the geometry. It's going to be a simple video, but hopefully it's very useful. If you rather just download the family, uh, you can contact me using that QR code right there on the screen. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in Revit. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up, where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. So in our last video, I showed you how to create a medical gas zone valve box. And after I had finished the video, I realized that we had two sets of diameters and they were kind of redundant so what i did is let's get for example our extrusion right and i go to edit extrusion so i used to have a different parameter here from the one of the connectors and now i have the same parameter so nominal diameter three nominal diameter two nominal diameter one nominal diameter 1, nominal diameter 2, nominal diameter 3. And in a similar way, I took the sweep, and if you go to Edit Sweep, and I select the profile, you'll see that if I click here, I go to Edit Profile, and you'll see that the diameter of the profile that I use for this sweep is now nominal pipe diameter 3. So nominal pipe diameter 3, nominal pipe diameter 2, nominal pipe diameter 1, 1, 2, and 3. And that would make it even cleaner. So if you want to make that change, it will be a good time for you to do it. So let me close out of this. Now the next family we're going to create is an alarm panel, an area alarm panel. And in the last video, I showed you this one, which has, you know, digital display for each one of the gases. But I think I'm going to go with the 3 series. It's a little bit newer and it has a nice LCD screen here. So let's take a look at our cut sheet and study and plan for the creation of our family, right? So if I come down here to the dimensions, and it seems like we can make it out of two parts, similar to our zone valve box, where we'll, we'll have this box behind the wall, and then you have this little flange in front of the wall. So let's plan for that. Let's uh, gather our dimensions. We have the width of the back box as 10.7 inches. Uh, the width of the flange is going to be 11.5 inches. The height of the flange is 9.7 inches. And then we have the depth of the box as 3.97 inches and the height of the box as 9 inches. So let's keep this in mind and let's get to it. So now we have some good information to start our family. So under families, let's go to new. Under English Imperial, I'm gonna go down to mechanical equipment. I'm gonna click open. And now we're at the top view by default, which is the reference level. Notice that it also opened a 3D view and a front and a left view. So we'll have our front, right, left, top, back, and bottom. So just like we did with our zone valve box, uh, let's create some reference planes that are gonna be helpful to flex our geometry. So I'm gonna right click here, create similar. I'm gonna go to pick plane, and I'm gonna give it an offset of, let's say, three inches for now. I'm gonna hit here, and I'm gonna hit here, and I'm gonna hit here and I'm gonna hit here and let's label our planes so this one's gonna be the back this one here is gonna be the front 
And when I say front, it's going to be the front of the box. We still need our flange later. So we have back, front. And now this one, I'm going to label right. And this one, I'm going to label left. And now let's go to our front view. And then here, I'm going to take this plane. And notice that if I click here, I'm selecting the level. I don't want to select the level. I want to select the plane. So I'm going to do tab. And now I'm selecting the level. First, I want to rename this as bottom. That's going to be my bottom plane. And I'm going to right click and create similar. I'm going to pick line. I'm going to give it an offset of, let's say for now, six inches. I know it's going to be nine inches, but it doesn't matter. Let's just use six for now. And now I want to rename this as my top. And now let's ensure some symmetry. So that whenever we change our parameters, things grow symmetrically. So let's go to the reference level. And here I'm going to go to align dimension. And then from here to here to here, click outside. I'm going to click here on equal. And this is overlapping a little bit ugly. So let's just change this to a different scale. And now I see a little better. Yeah, let's do the same in the other direction from here to here to here. We want to make that equal. Now let's dimension. So we go from here to here. And that's going to be our width. So if we want, we can associate our parameter already. Since we don't have a parameter to associate with, we have to create one. So I'm going to call it width. And it's going to be a type parameter, a length, and I can keep it grouped under dimensions. That's fine. So now let's do the same thing for the depth. And you always want a dimension from your strong reference to your weak reference, or in other words, from the fix to the flex. So I want to start here because this is going to be the wall. So from here to here and I hit escape and I click on my dimension and now I'm going to define a new parameter that's going to be the depth and I can keep it under dimensions and type. That's fine. So we have our depth and we have our width. What are we missing? We're missing on the front view our height. So we do the same thing. We click here. You got to be careful not to click on the level. You actually want to select the reference plane, the bottom reference plane. So I'm going to hit tab and then click on it again from strong to weak. And then this is going to be my height. So I come here, new parameter, and it's going to be height and I can keep it dimension type. That's fine. Now we have our main three parameters for the box dimensions. Now we're ready to define our extrusion. I'm going to go to the reference level again. And in the last video, what I did is I used the reference planes to define that extrusion. And then in this video, just for fun, I'm going to do it a different way so that you learn both ways. So this time, let's go to create. And then we hit the same extrusion, right? And then last time I select here and pick lines, and then I selected the reference levels. Right. In this one, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to do, okay, let's do a rectangle, for example, like here. And I'm just eyeballing it here. Okay. And I'll keep the extrusion end to a uh, one foot. Doesn't matter. Right. I click finish. And if I go to my view, that's the extrusion that was created. Okay. But what I really want is for this edge. To attach to this reference plane. So I can go to align AL, click here, click here, unlock it. I'll do the same thing for this one. Click here, click here, unlock it. For this one, click here, click here, unlock it. And then for this one, click here, click here, unlock it. And now the only thing we're missing is on the front view. The extrusion by default was one foot, but our reference plane was set 
temporarily as six inches. So we do the same thing here, align to this one, and lock it. And now let's see how our extrusion is flexing. So let's go to view and let's actually input the correct values. Let me change this to wireframe so I can see the lines behind. And now I'm gonna input these values into our parameters. I bring my parameters here so you can see them. And then the depth is gonna be 3.97 inches. I want the height of that box to be nine inches. And I want the width of that box to be 10.7 inches. Now I'm gonna move this away so you can see how it flexes. And I'll click apply. It's looking pretty good. Let's hit okay. Let's minimize this. Now let's create our flange extrusion, which is gonna be in the front of the wall. Let's go back to reference level. But before doing that, since this little box came out so nice, I'm just gonna save it as generic mechanical equipment in case we want to use it for future families. And I recommend you do the same. After all, there's a ton of mechanical equipment that has a width, a depth, and a height, right? So let's just save it as generic mechanical equipment. And now we can keep going with the flange extrusion creation. So I'm gonna click here, create similar, pick line, I'm gonna give it an, an offset. What's gonna be that offset? That offset's gonna be three quarters of an inch, so 0 0.75 inches. And I'm gonna name this, it's good practice to name all our planes, so this is gonna be Let's say flange front. And now I'm gonna create similar. And I'm gonna pick line. I'm gonna give it an offset. What's gonna be that offset? Well, that offset's gonna be 11.5 minus 10.7 divided by two, which is, uh, let's see, 11.5 minus 10.7 is 0 0.8 divided by two is 0 0.4. So we use 0 0.4 inches. That's pretty good. And let's do the same thing on this side. Then we label this plane left flange left. And we label this plane flange right. And now let's create our extrusion. And we could create our extrusion that come in here, like create, right? And then extrusion. And then, you know, do like a rectangle here. And then do the same thing that we did with the box and align here, here, here. I need to create a couple more reference planes for the top and bottom, but I'm gonna do that in a little bit. But what I'm looking for is an extrusion that looks a little bit nicer, right? It looks something like this with this nice rounded edges. So let's try to do that. So this is not the right plane to do that extrusion, right? We would want to start our extrusion on this plane and then extrude it all the way up to here. But the geometry needs to be contained in this plane, which we label and see why it's useful to label them front. So let's go ahead and go to a front view. And uh, we can go to create extrusion. And then here we need to set our plane. And the plane that I want is not the center front back. What I want is the front plane because that's where I want my extrusion to start. I'm gonna click OK. And then just to test it out, let's do a, a little rectangle here, right? Now let's do it a little bit bigger so that it's evident. I'm gonna click, let uh, the extrusion end 
uh, let, let's give it four inches just so that it's evident that it's protruding out. I'm going to click OK. And now let's go to our 3D view. And it seems like it's doing exactly what we want, right? This is our extrusion. It was just too much. Four inches is too much. So let's give it three inches just so that it looks a little better for now. So that's exactly what we want, right? Now let's go to our spec sheet and we'll see that that extrusion was 0 0.75 inches, right? But we already have a plane defined for that, right? Which is this one. And we labeled it flange front. So what we do is align to this one, this one, lock. Then we align to this one, this one, and we lock. And then align from this one, this one, and lock. And if we go to our 3D view, that's already looking way better. The only thing we need now is those rounded edges here. And you could have done that at the beginning, but I wanted to show you how the selection of the planes behave so you're more comfortable. So let's go back to our front view and I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to edit extrusion. And that's that same rectangle that we did before, but it has been aligned to the reference planes. Now all we need to do is round this corners up and we will be done. And we know that the radius of that rounding is 0 0.75 from the cut sheet. So you keep three quarters of an inch radius. And then you click this line and this line. Enter. Fit arc radius. This line and this line. And then you do the same thing here. This line this line and then this line and this line now it's looking pretty good already so let's just click here and then we go to our 3d view and it's looking really nice now think about it it makes sense if you like this kind of content you can subscribe to the channel if you click that bell you get notifications and then you don't miss any of our new videos and if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com and there you can contact me directly for some professional training. Now you could go fancy and then also round up in, in the other direction, right? So you have this, but I think that's just impractical. I'm not going to do that. So I think our geometry is pretty good for now. And then if you want to add your conduit connectors, then you know, you would go to your top view and you would do something similar to what we did in the previous video. But for this video, I want to focus on plumbing. So let's just keep the box. Okay. So if we want to check it out, how it looks in a shaded view, that's looking pretty good. It's flexing nicely. So let's just save our family. And it's going to be an area alarm panel. And I'm going to add one pipe connector just in case I have any filters that have to do with medical gases so that it correctly displays in the right view. So let's go to create and pipe connector. And I'm just going to place a generic connector here and give it a one inch diameter. I'm going to keep it as generic as possible, so I'm going to keep it as global. And now I'm going to save the family. 